Hi there, and thanks for checking out this video. I'm John Crin from Tennis Companion, and today we're doing an in-depth review and playtest of the Nike Air Zoom Vapor 10. Before we get started, I did want to let you know that this is not a sponsored video. I haven't been paid by Nike or anyone else to discuss this shoe. With that said, let's do a quick rundown of the Vapor 10's features, so you know exactly what you're getting with this shoe, starting with the weight and the fit. The shoe weighs in at 13.8 ounces for a men's size 10 and a half. It fits true to size, has a medium width and a medium arch, and it's not gonna require any break in time before you hit the court. It's available for both men and women, and does come in a clay court model, although the availability of that clay court version might vary depending on the country you live in. The outsole features Nike's extra durable rubber for great traction, which they've also used on previous generations of this shoe. To keep weight down, Nike has shed rubber in areas where it's not absolutely necessary, and then increases it in areas of higher wear. The outsole also makes use of what Nike dubs generative design, which means the tread runs all the way through the edges to help provide extra grip, especially when moving side to side. Compared to other shoes, the toe guard is pretty limited, so you'll want to keep that in mind if that's a problematic area for you. For the midsole, the Vapor 10 makes use of Phylon throughout the entire length of the shoe for comfort. It's the white material just above the black outsole with Nike Zoom printed on, and it's relatively thin, so you're not going to find it's an overly plush cushioning. You'll also find a Zoom Air unit under your heel, which you can't see from the outside, but it's going to help absorb shock without adding too much bulk, so your feet remain close to the ground for that responsive feel. A TPU foot frame runs around the perimeter of the shoe, which looks kind of like the edges of a saw, providing lateral stability for side-to-side -side movements. A rigid midfoot shank that you can see from the bottom of the shoe helps prevent it from twisting under pressure. For the upper, you're going to find breathable mesh for ventilation. And on the sides, you're going to get some extra stability out of the synthetic material, which covers the mesh and is also used to provide a small bit of extra protection up front for the toe cap. Last but not least, Nike's dynamic fit lacing system breaks the laces into distinct zones and allows you to pull just the right amount of tension at various points along the top of your foot to customize how snug the shoe fits. Now that you know exactly what to expect from the Nike Air Zoom Vapor 10, let's jump into the playtest and review. To help evaluate the Vapor 10s, I logged a two mile run to gain a feel for the comfort and weight of the shoe. I also completed some agility and footwork drills to flesh out traction and stability, and finally spent plenty of time hitting on the court to gauge overall performance. Let's start with the style of the Vapor 10s. Overall, I think it's one of the better looking tennis shoes on the market, which Nike further satisfies by offering an extensive and appealing colorway selection to suit virtually any player's taste. Nike's dynamic fit lacing system is one of the Vapor 10's standout features for customizing the shoe's fit. But without standard eyelets, it can be a bit clunky and the tongue doesn't always want to lay flat. We're talking small details, but it's unique to this shoe, so worth mentioning. As far as comfort goes, the Nike Air Zoom Vapor 10s are solid, but far from plush. In terms of shock absorption, they perform well on heel strikes with the Zoom Air unit absorbing the majority of impact, but the thinner midsole is going to have you feeling the court beneath your feet. So while they offer great response, if comfort is a top priority, there's a good chance you'll be disappointed. From a fit standpoint, the lacing system is ideal for achieving your personal level of comfort. And although I did find the shoes put a slight bit of pressure on the outside edge of my foot early in the playtest, it never presented any significant issues and was short-lived as they broke in. Although stability might not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of lighter tennis shoes, the Vapor 10s don't disappoint. Whether I was moving through footwork drills on the ladder or side to side on ground strokes, I found the shoes offer terrific support for confident and precise movement. For maximum stability, I do recommend using the top eyelet when lacing the shoes, which will allow the laces to hug your ankle for a more snug and supportive fit. As far as traction goes, Nike's outsole is excellent. My movement felt controlled and I didn't have any issues with quick starts or controlled stops. To be honest, I never really had to think about it, which is always a good sign. Without a doubt, durability is not the shoe's strength, and to be honest, never really has been for this model from Nike. Wear comes fairly quick on the outsole, and the front of the shoe around the toe is left exposed because the toe guard is super limited, which means the thin toe cap takes a beating early on and can become problematic. If you spring for the Vapor 10s, don't expect long-lasting durability. Of course, what the shoes lack in durability they make up for in weight and ventilation. As I put some work in on the ladder, they felt fast, which combined with their low profile design is ideal for rapid and more technical movements. There's definitely a trade-off between durability and weight, with Nike shedding protective material so the shoe stays light. Last but not least, the Nike Air Zoom Vapor 10s offer best-in-class ventilation with wide open mesh, 
which allows air to easily flow in and out to keep your feet cool. All in all, the Nike Air Zoom Vapor 10 is one of my favorite tennis shoes on the market. They offer excellent lightweight performance, great stability and traction, and they're well ventilated for comfort. Hands down, my biggest knock on the shoes is their durability, which as I mentioned, keeps them light and breathable. So instead of getting hung up on that fact, I'm inclined to think of their lower durability as a trade-off which I'm willing to make. Overall, the Vapor 10s are going to appeal to a wide range of players, but if comfort and durability are a top priority, then you might want to look elsewhere. So there you have it. If you'd like some extra detail on the Vapor 10s, don't forget to check out my write-up. I'll link it in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you'd like to join me for future videos, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.